I mean, but I'll tell you the problem with the criticism, it sounds disproportionate. You know, how can you slag a bike off just because you can't adjust the screen or because the switch gear is a bit daft? Hey, when you're riding it, and you just, I set off with the screen down sometimes, forgot, have it, forgetting to raise it. And you just go, F me, I've got to stop. Yesterday, it was getting a bit cool when I came off the mountain. And I'd left it in the down position because that's what you'd ask me. And I just thought, to change this, I've got to pull over. It's not easy to do in the lakes, is it, you know? Faff about with it, just pants, it's just wrong. So I think I was right to be as hard as I was on it because it, at the time, it gets properly upsetting. Like I say, if I met the Honda Blot, I'd say, what the f*** are you thinking? Were you on Saki or something when you designed that? Right, one thing that's relevant is this is my only form of transport. I've done 7,000 miles on this bike in about seven months. I ride it in every weather imaginable. And yes, it's been a decent slave. It's just a shame that every so often I get what seems like disproportionately angry with it. I'm giving it back soon. I'm not going to miss it as much as I thought. I thought it was a, going to be a step up from the NC750X. It's turned out not to be as good a step up as I wanted it to be. So Mossy, welcome back in the building. Thank you. Um, I think last time you were here, we shot a video with the Honda NC750X, didn't we? You did indeed. And you know what? That was a really popular uh, video that we did. And we alluded to it in that video that you would quite like to try the 1100. And I guess, well, that is why you're back here, basically, because yeah. you've, well, that's what we've got behind yeah. us. And we shot all, all of the footage yesterday in the beautiful Lake District, didn't we? We did. Um, I mean, let me take up the story. I, as any viewer watching the NC750X test would have known, uh, I really ended up liking that bike yes. a great deal. Surprisingly so, because on paper with just 58 horsepower, it didn't sound as though it was going to float my boat at all. But I ended up really, really liking it. And when it came to sending that back and wondering what to have next, this seemed like the obvious next step. This, to me, was just a, a bigger, more powerful version of the same thing. I then went to a Dunlop tyre launch and tried one uh, before mine was ready. And my immediate impression is, oh dear, what have I done? Because it was just really quite a big, tall and didn't feel unmanageable as such, but it was certainly not as easy to deal with as the NC was. Because uh, of the weight? Ju yeah, just the physical dimensions and the weight. And it was a bit bouncy as well. I thought, hmm, this is going to need work. This will probably be all right eventually if I modify it a bit. But uh, it dented my enthusiasm a bit. I can't always get to because well, I need to, this guy needs to let me pass. Thank you. Anyway, then the time came to get one for the longer period. Um, well, and then I went and brought my ankle. Uh, so I had to hold on the NC for a while while I got better and rode a T-Max scooter in the meantime so I could build up enough strength uh, in the foot and ankle. <laughs> well, I thought you had a pillion. I mean, in short, it's a very good bike. Uh, but it has some faults that cause me disproportionate levels of annoyance, stroke, anger, and you're always aware, particularly the slower or the trickier the scenario to deal with, of the bike size and weight and height. It's quite a tall thing. Mm. I mean, look, I'm a shorty, which doesn't help. I only have about a 30 inch inside leg, but in short, amazing comfort, brilliant fairing and screen, though we will mention the screen again in a less complimentary fashion. Very good engine, good brakes, suspension needed work. So I did some, uh, I did some modification on that. And all in all, a, a good capable touring bike. And Honda said straight away, do not consider this a sports touring bike. This is a touring bike. They underlined that fact. Okay. And do you know what? Journeying up here, I did a hundred miles on a 
and uh, on an NT with a manual gearbox. I swapped it for my long termer, and I I made about a hundred and fifty odd mile trip to you from there um, in Corby. Might have been two hundred by the time I finished it. And then we did the shooting in the Lake District yesterday, and it really emphasised every high and every low of the bike. Did it? Yeah, really well, did. Well, well, sometimes those um, little nadgery mountain passes do that. Oh man, that, that was where. Can I start with the praise first? Let, yes. Let's, let's, let's yes. be fair to it. For the sort of long journey that I did on it, and all manner of different roads. Uh, until I got to the really nadgery stuff, it was a bit of a 10 out of 10. Was it? The fairing is... Well, a, like a, just a really comfortable place oh, to man. be. Easy, yeah. Just, right, super comfy, nice riding position, nice wind protection, good and big tank, and it's quite a frugal motor, actually. I get between 200 and 250 yeah. miles per tank, yeah. Okay. And you could get more if you really took it... If you... You know, if you're on a mission to yeah. save fuel, you could probably get 300. It's a 20.5 litre tank. i am just decide when I'm going to start bitching about the screen because it really does annoy me. Right, it's it's wind protection is fantastic and it's adjustable. What, what, what could be uh, voted as that being less than perfect, I wonder? The fact that... To adjust it, you must stop the motorcycle, get off it, and grab the screen and adjust it to where you want it to be. Is just it, it's beyond me how anyone in Honda signed that off as being fit for purpose. Yeah, because the the, the change in circumstance that you yeah, want to increase you, sometimes, yeah, 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 because but, well, it starts raining or yeah, you get exactly. on a faster road or exactly. whatever. Exactly. And you know, like the likes of the Ducati ones yeah. and even the Tracer Nine GT, yeah. which I. Uh, did the other day you know it's a simple like squeeze exactly you grab on. and adjust it's and, instant and the ktm one you end up thinking oh god this is not quite as good because you're gonna like turn yeah, the wheel yeah. but you're oh, still man, on the that's bike. luxury compared to this <laughs> i mean strictly speaking if you're on a motorway Aaron, and you need to make an adjustment or you fancy an adjustment you've got to wait until you see the motorway services because you, you can't do it from the seated position it's deliberately adjusted so the adjustment is too stiff Honda don't want no you way, compromising. You, you could, and I guess you haven't tried it, but you could put the cruise control on, sort of yeah. like Superman it over the front. Yeah. and. Well, good luck to you. Good luck to you <laughs> if you fancy doing that. Look, if it had a less stiff or less resistant adjustment mechanism and a little handle like the Tracer, like some Triumphs, like some Ducatis, you could just adjust it to your heart's content. The left-hand switch pod, I counted them only this morning. I've got the DCT version, which has a couple of extra buttons, but there are 17 buttons on that pod alone. Wow. And it, it, whoever's signed that off in the ergonomics department needs... 17. 17 buttons. You can adjust modes. There's the obvious stuff like the, you know, the, the horn and the indicator, which are in the reversed position. There's, uh, you can adjust the riding modes... You can adjust the heated grips. Uh, I've forgotten what some of these things do. But finding the horn button took me quite a lot of time before it became an instinctive process. Well, you'd, already, I, you'd already crashed by that point. I've had a couple of near misses. I just wanted to toot to people to warn them I was there and I couldn't find the horn and they did the manoeuvre. Mm. If I'm filtering, I look where the horn switch is and I put my finger on it. I, right. You know, I have to deliberately move it. It's just ergonomic disaster. Okay. You know, uh, it, it, both features are so un Honda. Those two things sort of counter each other a little bit, don't they? It, it, um, do you know what? It, it, it's odd, Aaron. It, it's a very good bike, but because the details uh, are, are just so anger inducing and frustration inducing. Sometimes they spoil my view of the whole bike. In the early days when I had a couple of near misses because I couldn't warn people of my presence, I just I just wanted to park the bike. Mm. I just thought, you know, that that's just killed it for me. But let's get back to, uh, there's a couple of other things to moan about. Shall I moan about them now or shall I go well, about the good you, things? Well, let, you switch on Break the, it down and then yeah, figure yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bitching like, first, viewers. Yeah, like most... Uh, 
marriages are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you switch on the ignition and there's a whole host of things available on the TFT dash, but not for about 30 seconds. There's obviously a little man building up the pressure of the steam turbine or whatever powers them. And they don't display anything for about 30 seconds. So you just want to know before a ride whether you're likely to need fuel or just what time it is. Um, some people mourn as well, these little winglets. Mm. The indicators also serve as running lights. They're on all the time when you're running. Oh, yeah. So you get this sort of uh, orange glow. Yeah, and yeah. at night, it reflects in the back of those. I'm not so bothered by that, I have to say. Uh, and the dash as well in uh, strong sunlight, it reflects a bit too much uh, okay. to the point where you can't read the info as, uh, as right. much as you should. Now, bar that and something that will come to a due course, uh, that the weight, height, and just general size of it, I like it a great deal. If I was going to Scotland, and I might be quite soon, I'm happy to take this bike. Okay. But let, let, let's extol the virtues of uh, some of the better points. Um, that fairing, the, the wind, it, it's like sitting in a little bubble, it really is. is it? You are just totally unaffected by wind. And if you're not in quite the right sort of clothing for wet weather, when it starts to rain, if you tuck in a bit, unless it's torrential, if you tuck in a bit, you do not get wet. Is that right? Really good. Well, I mean, you know, that that's a real achievement then because, you know, getting that right on a yep. motorcycle is yep. not sort of straightforward. Yep. Otherwise, everybody yep. would do it. Exactly. And, and, and they don't. And they don't, yep. do they? So, you know, and, that's something to be praised. And if the screen was, you know, easier to adjust, ideally via a button, man, it, the, the protection from it is just fantastic. If I smoked, I could probably have a Marlboro on the motorway, <laughs> and it would. Is it that good? Man, it's fantastic. I mean, look wow. at the size of the thing. You yeah, know? yeah. Really good. Really good. Yeah. Brakes, very good. Are they? Suspension, right. When I first got on the NT in France, I thought, as I said, you know, I'm going to have to sort this out straight away. It's just too soft, too bouncy. And when I first got my bike and started to push it a bit, the fork really bothered me. Now, strangely, I got a Hyper Pro shock and fork springs ordered. Put the shock on straight away. That made quite a big difference. Not as much of a difference as it did on the NC. It wasn't that wanting. This one's got its standard shock in again. It's generally okay. It's a bit crashy over bumps, but if you load it suddenly, like going over you know, a real pothole, of which there are plenty, or you get to the bottom of a drop, it just it just sits straight. It just bottoms out. It's Does too it? it's too soft. And when I put the Hyper Pro, and then you imagine on, if you had a load of luggage, and uh, yeah, passenger, yeah, yeah. It, do, it would do that much more readily. It's not fit for purpose, really. It's not as bad as the NC. Okay. But I reckon it's a six out of ten tops. Okay. But it went straight to ten with the Hyper Pro. Did it? Know, that, that was really good. The only reason this is not fitted with it now is this bike has effectively gone back to Honda. I've mm. finished my tenure with it but they let me have it just for this uh, production, this this video. Okay. Uh, tires, not very good. I, I, I tried a manual gearbox version of the bike and it had the standard Dunlop GPR 300 tires and phew, they're not very good. As soon as you start pushing it, they feel pretty vague and they're poor in the wet as well. That That is a... OE tire, yeah, you, have to, right. you have to say. On, on yeah. Dunlop's admission, they don't this they quite readily admit it's not a premium tire, and if you want a bit more performance, then get an know, aftermarket yeah. one. I've put uh, Road Smart 4s on it. I was in France to test Road Smart 4s, though I didn't like the NT so much. I like the tires on this bike, and I fitted them to, to this long term, and they've been absolutely fine in all weathers. Mm. And I like the fact this is a big, cumbersome bike that you do not want to get it. You, you don't want to get uh, you don't want to get into any sort of difficulty on it because it's not a bike no, no. that you can just change your mind on or save that readily. Mm. You know, you need good grip. It's and a bit of a it's Titanic, a monster. Isn't it? It's yeah. a monster. But that is only apparent when you're asked to do 
videos with uh, a company called Knox, you know, and they take you to the most nudgery places in yeah, the Lake yeah. District. Well, they? yeah, just a word on that, because, I mean, obviously we did we did plan the route out to take in the beautiful yep. landscape and yep. so on, and I was looking at some of the places that we went, and I was a bit like, mm, is this... Have we chose have we chose the right places for this motorcycle? Uh, and then, uh, and then be... proceeded to get loads of passerbyers on motorcycles. They were actually very similar. So yep. you know, people do ride that type of road uh, on hang these. On. on it these was bikes. only difficult. Right, we went over Hoddister Pass. Yeah, yeah, we did. Quite narrow, very twisting, gradients. It was all right. But it was when you were asking me to do U-turns and yeah, all yeah. that nudgery stuff and turning round in places with a steep bit gradient. Of dirt and yeah, bit exactly. Of gravel that. And... It worked out okay, but my heart rate was <laughs> high. This is a bike you can't save if you're wrong footed. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Let's sing a, a few praises of the DCT. The most, generally speaking, seamless, fast, fuss-free gear change you can imagine. It's better than any human can, can do. But there are times when, you, you know when you're on one of those roads and you just see a time to overtake, but you need to drop in a gear, suddenly that seems like a bit of a chore. On this, you either just whack the throttle open and it does it for you, or you can override it with a button. Mm. And you just get the most instant gear change you can imagine i didn't like it when i first started using it years and years ago uh i thought why do i want uh, electronics to change gear for me you know it's it's reducing the involvement and oh, the fun yeah, but... but i've learned the benefits you can't stall it either and away from the lights you just whack the throttle open there's none of this balancing revs and clutch bite it just does it for you and you whoosh away Class. really good really good good stuff uh, like the heated grips, like the cruise control, like the standard fitment panniers, I've put a top box on this. Uh, really good, 50 litres, 500 quid, mind you. How can you justify 500 quid for, what, a, plastic for a top box? box? Yeah. However, when you're using it, you can store so much kit in it, a couple of helmets, it almost seems worth it. Quite like the noise it makes. It makes a fantastic noise. Yeah, you probably heard it better than yeah, I it, could it, ever. It's, yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah. Okay, well, look, fin let's finish up. Um, so if you would, you know, there'll be people out there looking at, yeah, I kind of want a Honda touring bike. Yep. Do, do I go down the 750 route? Yeah. Or do I go for this uh, 1100? Yeah. Which do you think is the better bike? Clearly they're different, they're different do, power Do you know levels. what, right, let me answer that straight away by saying the better bike is an NC950. <laughs> <laughs> so, Honda, if you're listening, make a note of that on your fag packet, get designing it, get it made in a two or three years. Uh, I like the engine power of this, I like the fact that you can whip past cars and stuff more easily, but I like the light weight and general, you know, extra manageability of the NC. This bike for me is a bit too heavy. It's 248 kilos wet. By the time you've added a few bits and bobs to it, you know, you're talking about 260 plus, and it's just a bit much. Uh, but the tank compartment of the NC750X is the best thing in motorcycling, so I wish I had that. I want something in the middle between the two. If I was forced to make a decision, I'd have a modified NC750X like the way I did it. You know, decent tyres, brake pads and suspension. Uh, because I just... Uh, it, it, it was just an easy to live with motorbike. This is less so. Uh, so, look, really hope that's been uh, helpful to you guys watching and considering which touring bike you should uh, look at next, I suppose. Um, Please like, let us know what you think in the comment section. Check out all the gear that Mossy was wearing on test and we shall see you on the next one.